okay, that was kind of the run through of the box and where I've kind of ended the project. Let's dive into my non-schematic schematic and I'll explain all the things that are going on inside that box. Um, I'll do another video opening up the box I'll, and um, looking inside the CU, uh, what I've done there underneath and what I've done on the other piece of track, how I tied in all the power taps. Yeah, let's let's jump into the schematic. So here it is. Move over so you can see it. Uh, this is kind of the drawing. Again, it's crude. It gets the job done. So you can see my driver stations there at the bottom. The first thing I focused on was the power. So let's take a look. Here's the power supply. I show it going into a switch. That's what you need to understand is the positive into one side of the switch um, in the middle. That's the line. And the negative coming in on the other side of the switch so that I can actually isolate everything. So flip it, flip the toggle switch up or digital. It powers the, the digital uh, CU because as you can see, the power leads go in to the CU here. And then when you flip the switch down, it sends it over here, which is a terminal block inside the box. Um, I have a little green star beside everything that is inside the box. So you can notice that. And so the analog system is built around this, uh, this terminal block. The terminal block, uh, you see that it's got some circuit breakers built into it. The easiest thing to do is to go to slot car corner or I went to Professor Motor because I had another order. They sell this. This is a two lane single power supply uh, terminal block that already has the circuit breakers built into it. And this is a great thing to base all of your wiring off of, this terminal block and how it's laid out. It makes wiring so easy. Bravo, Professor Motor, Bra Bravo, um, Slot Car Corner, because they developed all this. And so that really helped having the schematic to understand how you hook up your driver stations. And that's what really this comes in, this comes in handy. I recommend it, it's $20 and it has everything that you need. I built my own that's in the box, but yeah, you can, you can just buy that if you want. You're ordering a slot car, throw that in on your next order, then you've got it. So when you decide you want to do this, you're in good shape. So let's talk about the CU first. So the power comes in, we flip the switch, we go to the CU. So here's our CU. And what you have to understand is this is negative polarity in the CU. Let me just go full screen with the iPad. So here is a larger version um, full screen so you can see what's going on with, on the CU. And what you have to understand is inside the CU, both of the left rails are connected with the wire and the right rails are connected with the wire. And so if you look at the color code, if you use the Carrera power tap wires, that's the color coding that I went with because I know a lot of people use those, they purchase those, and it really makes it easy. I know you can use lots of different wire. I used 16 gauge wire for this project. If I was going to do another project to build a second one, I would use 14 gauge wire throughout just, just to have a little more heft. Uh, but I've not had any issues with 16 gauge. Um, I think you're fine, but I don't know what I'm doing. And so I saw some recommendations on 14 gauge. I would probably switch to 14 gauge. What I did was I entered two switches and you can see how I have them wired up. Basically, when you throw it, it disconnects that lane from the CU, lane two, and then the wire the second switch is cutting off lane one. And so when we run in analog mode, you switch those off and those isolate those lanes so that when you fire up the analog system um, here and it enters the track, it doesn't come back through these rails and damage the CU. Again, definitely wanted to uh, isolate the lanes and I use those switches. Again, I probably could have gotten away with combining those onto one switch and, um, and not dealing with the common, but I just didn't want to take a chance of anything impacting that CU. So again, I over-engineered it. So then if we go back to the power switch and we switch it to the analog, we go down. Now we come over to the terminal block. And so here's what we're looking at. These two, uh, the two breakers on the right are a six amp circuit breaker. And the two on the left um, I believe are a three amp circuit breaker in basically if you go to professor motor or slot car corner, you can see how these are keyed one through eight. So what you look at here is one and two are, are tied together with the circuit breaker two, three, and four are tied together with a clip. Um, so that those, all those circuits are together and four and five have the circuit breaker. And so that's all about protecting your system. If you plug in a controller wrong or you get a car that shorts out for some reason, 
Um, those circuit breakers will kick, and they're self-resetting. As soon as you fix the problem, they come back on, and you're good to go. And then if you look at uh, 6, 7, and 8, they are all uh, tied together with um, those two circuit breakers. So basically 1, 2, 3, and 4, 5 um, is where your, your, your negative comes in to play. And uh, six, seven, and eight are where the positive power um, comes in. And that's the difference. Um, the CU is negative polarity. In the analog, we're switching to positive polarity so that the cars go in the same direction. So you can see the direction in the lanes here. Breaking this down even further, from your driver's station, red on lane one goes to number one on the terminal. Red on lane two goes to number five. Um, on the terminal. And those are um, one and five. Those are just controllers. Um, it's the red on the controller. And then a white on the uh, lane one and lane two go to four and six. And so basically um, the red is your brake circuit. That helps you understand what uh, what's going on there. And then your power comes in on three, um, the black wire from the power supply. And the power supply, uh, the red side of the power supply comes into seven on the terminal block. You have the black left over from both controller stations. And the black in lane one becomes the yellow. And I brought it over to these two switches. And then this is where I can isolate the analog. So this is where we can isolate the analog so that we can protect the CU. If we don't isolate the analog, then the CU sees all kinds of shorts because the power taps are... We're not swapping the power taps. So those wires stay the same. They're just going to take advantage of whatever, uh, whether the CU is controlling the current or the analog side is controlling the current. Black lane one comes into this switch, and then the red number two goes over to this switch because that is your left lane. That's the negative. And so uh, lane one negative is the red. It goes to the left rail on the track on lane one and the yellow comes out of that switch, which is your positive on the right rail. So positive polarity, right rail. And then the other switch handles the lane two. The gray wire is actually, I'm using white wire and black. So your white wire comes into the switch on one side and it gets switched to the left rail. And then the black comes off of driver station number two onto the right rail and that's your positive. I basically put a terminal block in for all of the power taps so that it made it easier to wire to the CU. There's not a lot of room put in a bunch of wires on the CU. So what I did was I condensed them down to one wire from the rails in the CU out to the terminal block, and then that terminal block is feeding the rest of all of the power taps. That is an easy way to manage that. That can go underneath your table. Um, you could always join them with connectors and not use a terminal block, throw them all into one, and just make it nice and easy but I followed the Carrera color coding. And that, in a nutshell, is the two lines digital analog box, non-schematic schematic. schematic. <laughs> um, as you see, it definitely, definitely works. I'm kind of proud of the fact that I was able to wrap my mind around this project, not being an electrical person, and make it work. Again, I'm sure there are way more efficient ways to do this. And I'm up for some suggestions, so leave, leave a comment in this video and let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, I'll try to answer them the best I can. If you're interested, um, reach out to me and I'll get a, get a copy to you. Again, guys, uh, this was a project that all came about because I wanted, I got my new controller and I wasn't able to use it immediately and it was driving me crazy and I'm a little obsessive compulsive. So I sat down that weekend and figured it out and it was trial and error. Um, there were some things that it didn't work. I shorted out the CU quite a few times. Um, it's a good thing that that's kind of a robust system that Carrera has built, but it's really that, that positive polarity switch uh, from negative polarity that you really have to be careful with and you really have to make sure that you, that you isolate all that. So isolate the CU, isolate the analog, and you should be good to go. I hope this video was helpful. I hope you find this informative. I hope that maybe if you thought this was a project that you couldn't take on, I dumbed it down to a place where anybody can can build this. I just want people to have fun racing, whether it's digital, analog, or both, right? And sometimes you have to be resourceful. I think that with a little bit of ingenuity, a little bit of uh, bravery, maybe, if you're a little nervous about electrical like I am, that you can do this. I did it. I know that you can do it. And hopefully my instructions 
are simple enough to follow. And if I need to make any corrections, let me know. If you have ideas to make this even better, if we can go from five switches down to one switch, that would be awesome. If there's a piece of equipment out there that can fit in that box that will make all that happen magically, I want to know all about it. But this is for my track, and you can build one for your track. I'm pretty excited about it, mainly because I get to use that that new analog controller, and I love it. But guys, if you like this kind of content, if you find this helpful, hit the subscribe button, give me a like, hit the bell so you get notified anytime I put out new content. I don't know if it's any good or not. I really think that it will be a tool that people can use as a resource for a long time, and I'm really pretty excited about it. And so, guys, I thank you. I thank you for your support of my channel. I thank you for the kind words that I get um, all the time. That's really humbling um, that I'm a part of a, an amazing community uh, that loves this hobby as much as I do. So, guys, go have some fun racing. Thank <laughs> you.